Welcome back. Time now for our panel. Joining us today, CBN chief political analyst David Brody and veteran and award-winning journalist Ray Suarez, former senior PBS NewsHour correspondent and current host of World Affairs. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you, John. Great let's to see you. Let's start off with a new poll showing front, ro front runner Joe Biden in potential trouble in Iowa. Joe Biden has 18 percent, Elizabeth Warren nipping at his heels at 17 percent, and South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg surging ahead at 13 percent. Ray, David, I'd love to get you both to comment on this, but what are we to make of these numbers? Ray, starting with you. Well, look, it's still months before people wander through the snow to uh, school gymnasiums and other places to caucus with their neighbors. In a field this big, it's not just politics, it's mathematics. It's going to be fluid. You can win with 18 to 20, 22 percent of the vote. Okay. You can win the first several primaries with results that bad. So um, I, sh I wouldn't put... It's interesting, the movement, who's up, who's down, who's shaving points, who's adding them, but it doesn't tell you anything determinative about Iowa. And Biden is down six, and Elizabeth Warren's up four in Iowa overall. Buttigieg in third place, that's a nice place for him to be because he needs to be in that three or four spot coming out of Iowa. So Bernie Sanders just recovering from a heart attack. Congressman Ro Khanna, who we had on earlier, he, uh, he says his candidate is back. Uh, Ray, what do you think? Are we seeing Bernie Sanders, uh, the revival of Bernie Sanders? Well, he looked pretty solid when he did his rally in Queens the other day. Huge crowd there, an endorsement from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, you know, if he says, uh, unless there's good evidence to the contrary, if he says he's okay, we have to take him at face value. It's hard to run for president, I mean physically. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be president. Mm -hmm. So it's reasonable to ask if he's better. A quick 10 seconds on that, can I just say, everybody made a big deal of the crowd, 26,000 in New York. Okay, hold on. Ray, you're from New York, right? Mm -hmm. right? It's a liberal town, two ultra-liberal speaking, and they're giving liberal orthodoxy. So, I mean, we would expect 26,000 people in, in liberal New York City to hear liberal speak. Perhaps. I mean, it, may, it kind of makes sense. Perhaps Good even point. more. Yeah. Uh, well, the White House still playing cleanup after a rough week last week, including the acting chief of staff slip, uh, mounting pressure on uh, Syria and the G7 reversal on Doral. Uh, David, are we beginning to see the GOP, some of the GOP break with the administration? I think that's a little overblown. I know there was a big story in the Washington Post today. Look, Lindsey Graham had some tough words, but Lindsey Graham, you know, well, that, that's significant. Don't get me wrong. But then if you look deeper into the article, they're talking about a House member or two that might be off the reservation. I think it bears watching. I'm not sure if it's actually this big deal at this point. It does bear watching, though. Yeah. Uh, so Beto O'Rourke, he said that he would like to see churches lose their tax-exempt status if they don't support same-sex marriage. Uh, today, Housing of Urban and Ur Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson, he weighed in on church and state matters during a prayer at a cabinet meeting. We have sound of that. Let's listen to that, and we'll get your reaction. Help us all to recognize as a nation that separation of church and state means that the church does not dominate the state and it means the state does not dominate the church. It doesn't mean that they cannot. Ray, this could become a 2020 issue. And it sure could. And um, maybe all the other candidates should mug Beto O'Rourke on the way out of a debate one day because <laughs> after 20 years of saying, we're not going to mess with your interior operations, and 20 years of saying, we're not coming for your guns, and we're not going to bother the churches. O'Rourke is overturning all those orthodoxies. He's just one candidate polling in, you know, at 3%, but it's a problem. Yeah, and Beto's going to take your guns, too, by the way, while you're at church. So there you go. So, yeah, he, he's been a disaster for the Democrats having to answer this, though Elizabeth Warren answered it in, in Abby's piece, mm -hmm. saying she does not agree with Beto O'Rourke on this. Good move if you're going to run in the general election, for sure. All right, David and Ray, thank you both very Good much.